Hello guys and welcome for another PvP Basics video. Today we're gonna talk about the Outpost Rush or in short OPR. This is basically the PvP Battleground in New World and today we will take a look at small different details which a lot of people don't really consider or they don't take them that important. Something that I want to mention is that in Season 2 of New World I managed to place 17th in the leaderboards for Outpost Rush with a total of 568 wins which is roughly around 1000 games. I also managed to get 8th place with the kills leaderboards with a bit above 11,000 kills. In general, since day one, I played more than 2000 games in the, in the Outpost Rush, so it's safe to say that I pretty well know how the mode works and of course the small different changes and different shot goals that you can make during the game. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and take a look at this match that we played yesterday on stream. In this match we had a lot of people that are actively participating in wars. It's pretty safe to say that every one of them is a really good PvP player and of course they have experience and they know exactly what they need to do with their class. As you can see in the very beginning, we are all aiming to get to middle as soon as possible and this is also the reason why I'm using my light gear just so I can have the dodge roll of the light. Usually I'm using a heavy gear with a flamethrower so I can apply a lot of pressure on the melees and of course their healers with the anti-healing build. As you can see I already changed to heavy and the first thing that I'm aiming to do is to apply pressure on the door by placing my splitting grenades which I also have the perk for the anti-heal effect. My second goal would be to reach this place here so I will be in between the door and the stairs so every single light player that wants to get up the stairs and take a better position on the ramps would have to pass through me so they most likely will receive a small damage or maybe they will even get scared and they will be pushed back outside. Something really crucial and important to note is that you should avoid the middle area of the point as you will be hit by all the ranged users from outside. So let's see how this plays out and let's discuss other things that are not so easy to spot but they are really important. As you can see a lot of light players are going up but I'm in heavy so I cannot really pressure them by chasing them. The next thing that we can take a look and why it's so key is that if you look at here we have all the melees applying pressure to their door. Meanwhile all our teammates are entering from our door without even having the problem to face an enemy. This is why it's so important to push towards the enemy door and of course to apply pressure so they will respect you and they will keep the fight there. As you can see from now the fight is pretty close to the enemy door and of course this is giving us chance to take a better position to let our healers cast for free also our range DPS can do the same and of course with the time we're gonna just win the fight. It's really crucial to get inside the point even if you are in light gear due to the fact that if you stay outside you are most likely useless for your teammates because you don't have the full vision of the people inside the point and therefore you cannot secure kills, you cannot secure pressure and of course you are not doing anything at all. If we take a look at the fight that is happening you can safely see that they are only melees and there is nobody to support them. With the time they gonna lose their value and they will start dying one by one. If we take a look later on on the fight you will see that we already won the fight and we managed to push them outside and continue to extend the pressure towards their base. In the second example that I want to show you we are in the exact opposite position because we are now the ones that are standing outside of the base and the enemy team has the control of the middle base. As you can see here there is zero players from our team that are inside and we also have a brute that is currently blocking our access to the middle point and it's standing on the door. So the best decision here to do is just to wait for your teammates to group and try to enter the middle point. 
Of course, this is easier said than done because when you try to enter from this small choke point, it's really hard to establish the control as you are all choked into the middle and therefore you can be easily bombed and maybe getting killed. Even better choice would be if you split your army so they can enter from the back door which is located here but unfortunately when you play OPRs there is quite a lot of random players with which you cannot have the best communication as if you play in a group. Also something to note is that this is the perfect example of how an assassin should play because as you can see here we have an archer, we have a mage, we have a healer and we have I believe another light user and this is basically the perfect scenario for this assassin to jump down from the ramps and apply pressure to them. Of course the priority would be the healer but as I saw that I'm trying instantly to turn my attention to him and of course to apply pressure so we can turn on him and kill him before he manages to get a kill. Unfortunately this is of course easy to say but if they have more than one assassin it would be a disaster for your team and most likely the healers. As you can see here my teammates which are a heavy bruiser and a healer are basically dead so for me it would be a suicidal mission to enter inside and fight. That's why I'm just deciding to step back and of course wait for regroup. Unfortunately my other teammates that are not in communication with us decide to enter and give it a try. Of course I have to do the same and support them and not just standing outside doing nothing but as you can see it's pretty fast known that there is no way that we're gonna win this fight as we don't have enough players and enough pressure. From here on of course there is something to be made as a decision and this is due to the fact that in 40 seconds we have a Baron that is spawning. As we all know Baron is pretty interesting objective and a lot of people prefer to go for it. Unfortunately as you can see now on the map we have quite a bad position for the all teammates of the team. We have one person that is pretty far away from everyone, we have one person that is already going towards Baron and we have a lot of people that are just respawned and getting closer to the action as well. This leaves us with few players that are still on middle which most likely will be killed due to the fact that they have players disadvantage and they don't have enough numbers to fight. Now with this perspective we are entering the Baron pit quite early and we are hoping to get the Baron killed before the enemies arrives. Of course this is not the case because as we can see here, I went a little bit too deep, uh, but as we can see here while the Baron is halfway we can already see that more than 10 enemies are actually getting on time into the Baron pit and we are just three players here which will most likely die. Now of course in many of the games those three players will start typing in the chat where are the, where are the teammates why they don't come at Baron. This is actually wrong because we did the wrong decision here to split from everyone else and not really to support so we can go all together. And of course as I said 10 or even more than 10 players are entering the Baron pit we're gonna die here even when we try to last hit the Baron uh, it's, it's getting close but not enough and from here on the enemy have the advantage. One thing to note is whenever you feel that you are losing the Baron make sure that you capture middle at least this way you will minimize the losses of points because the enemy will have just one base and this will give them one point per three seconds so this is not that much of gain for them and of course you would be able to stabilize. As we are getting killed I will go a little bit forward to the video. So as you can see here we already captured the middle point, we already have our Luna point and the enemy has the Baron. We are not gaining any points but as I said if they have only one, uh, only one base this will minimize the gain for their team. Unfortunately enough our team is fighting outside of the middle point right here as you're gonna see it in a second and this is bringing the fight outside which means that we are leaving the middle point without any defense. As you can see there are few players that are already inside the point and we cannot really fight them because they would basically kill us. So what we have to do here is just to regroup and enter the point. 
Unfortunately enough we are pretty slow on the rotation and the change of the position of the fight so therefore we are gonna lose the middle point in no time. And here we are still trying to enter. I believe the calls are off, but uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm calling that to my teammates. And now already we are looking towards the point and to entry of it. But of course we are, at least I am pretty low on health and therefore I cannot really enter alone. Now we are already inside, but of course the point is already theirs due to the fact that they have so many red players and we have around 3 to maximum 4 players inside the point. This means that we don't have any pressure and we are gonna either get killed or we are gonna get pushed away. Otherwise there would not be a possibility for us to make points so we have to definitely fight for it. And as you can see here there is still too many enemies. As you can see there is quite a lot of red and we don't have enough players. We are just 4 so there is no way that we are winning this and we are gonna lose it. Last chance to survive, boom, dead. So we saw how we tried to enter the point but it was pretty late and the fight was already lost from outside. Now we are gonna take a look at the fight that is pretty easy to explain and why we are winning it. As you can see again the enemy has the middle point and they have quite a lot of people inside. But the problem here for them is that they are trying to establish that pressure from inside to outside. When you leave the point you are basically making it even for you and the enemy. While you are standing inside the point you have this choke on the door that is giving you extra clumps and of course a lot of pressure towards the enemy. As soon as you leave the point and you go outside in the open which is this area here you are having an equal fight with everyone and basically it's up to skill and of course positioning for both teams to win. As you can see here they are trying to establish pressure outside which is so far working but as soon as we get our teammates here as a backup all the range players would be able to hit every one of their melees and of course this way we will be able to get some kills. From here on I also see a really good uh, timing that I can hit on the backline and this is exactly what this build is used for. This is the best example that I can give that you can apply pressure with the heavy flamethrower build. At this point I see already that my rune is almost ready. I have my burnout ready. Unfortunately I don't have my potions as I already used them but I'm safe enough to go there because I can see that my bruiser is here and my healer is also alive on 15 meters away so basically he will be able to support me with some heals if needed. From here on I go with the burnout and as you can see those 5 light players which are mainly either DPS or healers are pressured just by my presence. I will never be able to kill any one of them alone but it's safe enough for me to go into them because they have to respect me and they need to reposition themselves. Now from here on their choices of reposition are either to go here on the side as a flank either go closer to the fight of the melees which is even more riskier and of course to get back inside. The safest thing that they will ever do is just to go back inside because they have all those structures and objectives that are giving them safe heaven. Of course this is exactly what I want and as you can see they are all going through the door which is the choke point that I mentioned earlier. Now we have 4 players in front of me, 2 players on the right side of me and I have my vines. Of course I will not be able to catch every one of them but as you can see this applies a lot of pressure to their backline and they are safe to go inside but they are giving up the door which is giving us the chance to enter for free and of course transfer the fight here in the middle of the point and not on the door. As you can see we already have some healers entering and this is basically giving us the chance to make the fight equal on middle and of course to turn back and capture the point for ourselves. This is how you should 
always aim to enter because if you are always dumping everything on the door while the enemy's melees are there you would most likely lose 90% of your fights. From here on it's just up to us to keep the tempo and of course defend the middle point so we can make sure that we have the established 2 points control and we will gain in the long run more points than the enemy does. As you can see I'm also trying to establish pressure outside so we can make sure that all those users that were standing before on the ramps are also pushed away and of course they don't have any more pressure. Now we're gonna take a look a little bit further into the match and how you should be able to react if you have a good attention to the details and why the map is so important. As you can see here we have two bases which were uh, Luna and middle which is the Sun and I literally turn in the same second while I see that someone is trying to capture Luna of course you have two indications for that the first one is more visible it's in the middle of your screen and it literally says outpost so in the moment but uh, it could be Luna it could be star is being contested this means that there is a person who stands on the circle of the point even though there could be a respawn there and the tick will not happen this indication will always be given as you can see as well on the upper side of your UI you will see that there is a tick starting to form on the middle point which can be seen up here the quality is not that great for which I apologize but as you can see the tick is going and this means that I need to go and of course react to that otherwise we will be get basically giving away a base which of course is not ideal as there is just one player here and it's a healer so at this stage I cannot kill the healer he cannot kill me either but we can just stay here and as long as it's one on one on the point we can basically have the point until someone else enters the fight now as you can see I will try to apply a little bit of pressure uh, we know each other so it's a little bit of jokes and stuff but at the end it ends up for us saving the point now another point of example that we can make is when we try to extend our lead from two to three caps this is really risky and a lot of teams are losing mainly because of greed by trying to extend the lead from two to three bases of course triple cap will make the game end really quick but not always it's that easy to make and of course as you can see here they have a fully built base with two doors and a respawn the main problem here is that every single person that you kill from the enemy will respawn 20-25 meters away from you and he will be back in the fight in no time while your teammates that lose their lives will be respawned either at the fort or on the other side of the map in your outpost and therefore they would need a lot of time to get back into the fight something also to mention is the awareness of your teammates and groups if you can see here again I see that my teammates which are the bruiser and the healer are dead this means that I will no longer be able to stay here for free because there is nobody who can support me with heals or with crowd control that's why I'm calling my other teammate and uh, I believe the archer is also nearby that we should just regroup somewhere and wait for the other teammates to to be alive and to come back to fight so from here on we basically disengage because this is the safest thing that you can do of course if you play with randoms I believe that in around 7 out of 10 games most of the people will just go to the door they will try to destroy it they would not even pay attention to their healers and their backline the enemies will jump from here they will kill first your healers and range players and at the end all the melees will say simply be there uh, just as walking ducks and they will be killed as well and this will create momentum for the enemy team because they just killed half of your team desynced from the other half of the team and therefore they can push with a whole zerg of 20 people and they will be unstoppable force up until they reach your point and uh, basically will be in the same situation 
So from here on we can see as well that now there is uh, a bit less than 5 seconds to Baron which is the second Baron of the game we see some enemies that are trying to contest middle but unfortunately they are in a really bad position why? well because most of their teammates are on their point in star and they are just grouping up to come here while our teammates coming from up to here and the teammates that are regrouping from star to here are basically sandwiching those here in the middle and they will be an easy kill for every one of us as you can see this guy is jumped on by 10 people from both sides and he will be simply dead in no time from here on we of course extend towards the baron pit and this is now a completely different scenario from what we had in the past as you can see the last time we entered baron was three people from our team and nobody else this time however we see three or four people from our team but the same can be said for the enemies as they have as well three to four players here actually they have two healers three healers and i believe one dps the first and main reason here to fight is the baron but the second most important part is to make sure that everyone from the enemy team is killed if you cannot however kill the enemies before taking the baron please make sure to reduce the enemy numbers as much as possible every single person can steal the baron and many different things can happen so don't make it that a healer steals the baron from 20 people under their noses so as you can see here we try to already establish some pressure to those guys one of them is leaving and of course we are trying to pressure the others without even touching the baron because like i said we don't want it to be still so here the fight continues more and more players are coming from both teams but of course the pressure is for our team and we already managed to push most of them outside they still have two healers inside but of course this is not a big threat so we will turn to the baron and we're gonna try to secure it at the end two other enemies entered but it's too late they cannot get to it on time and therefore the baron is won now from here the same as the last situation when we lost baron the enemy reacted completely normal to this and they already acknowledged that they're gonna lose the baron that's why they already captured middle and now it's their time to try and defend middle so we can have the minimum effect of gaining points while their points are locked so let's see how this plays out and if we go a little bit forward we will see that our team is basically trying to enter middle point and of course to capture it so we can get back on track with the two outposts and we can get some points i just wanted to note something here that all our teammates are coming from baron straight to middle but at the same time your teammates that are respawning from the fight that already died will come also to middle from another angle it's really crucial that you split your army into two because if you go all together from one place you will basically clump again on the door and this will not benefit you at all in fact it will be a negative impact for your team and most likely you will lose the fight and you will be in a situation where the enemy teams wins the fight here they extend the push up to your base and they are threatening to enter your base destroy everything and triple cap you so that's why the correct decision here is that all the Baron players are coming from the back door, all the respawning players are coming from the front or normal door and you are entering from two points onto the middle base. As you can see here I'm still missing my teammates because they are far away. Uh, they are still 70 meters away so if I enter there is a really high chance that I can be bursted down and I will die so that's why I'm deciding to stay a little bit passive I see this one uh, guy that is trying to kill me but he's in light so that's not much of a of a threat to me so I will just wait here and as you can see now 10 seconds later my teammate is already here he can support me with his crowd control abilities and therefore we can start the fight outside also our healer is there as well and as you can see now we are fighting around five to six players that are red and we are just three but of course we are three 
which we have two heavies and one healer. There is no way for them to kill us that fast due to the fact that our healer is alive. For them the best choice is to focus the healer, but unfortunately for them they are not doing it and of course we are able to apply pressure. At the same time our teammates are pushing from the other side of the door in middle and they are applying pressure to the other side so therefore we already transferred the fight inside and as you can see here now we have more blue players than red and therefore the cap is started for the middle point. So let's see how this fight plays out as well. It's uh, pretty interesting to watch and of course to analyze because those are the things that basically give you the edge as you can see again all the light player like our healer for example those players there this one there those are all light users either being ranged dps or a healer if you are such player this is your place this is the place where you have the most impact on top of the ramps or here in the back uh, that you can hide or, or kite around. If you are standing outside of the point you will never have any impact on the game inside and basically your team will just lose. So again a really hard fight out inside. There is a lot of enemies entering they are trying to keep their their base but unfortunately not enough to win the fight as we can see here they are all clumped up in the middle we managed to detonate all of them and again due to the fact that they don't have pressure on the door our teammates are safe to enter and take a better position so they can be beneficial for the fight and from here on basically the game is won because we have again two bases we have the baron and from here up until the end it's up to us to keep the tempo to not be greedy to extend for a triple cap there is no need of a triple cap when you can just save uh, save two bases and uh, just establish pressure on them and by the time you're gonna just win the game with just defending the middle one of course they can try to back cap they can go and take the brute which actually in this game was not that useful for both teams because nobody went for it uh, as you can see here the corrupted portal indication is uh, stating a life which means that nobody killed it and I believe that nobody actually uh, placed the brute apart from the one that was used from our team in the very beginning afterwards it was never used so it was all comes coming down to fighting and of course positional control and here again you can see I'm a heavy user I'm a I'm a guy who has to be on on the fight in front of everyone but here I believe that our healer was dead few minutes ago I mean few seconds ago so I'm just waiting for him to regroup and now as I see him here already came back to the fight I will jump down and start applying pressure for the enemies so they don't safely enter to the point as we know this is really crucial again on the door you need to apply pressure on the door of the enemies and if you give them the free time then you need to mop it up somehow because otherwise you are just giving yourself uh, too much of a struggle. As you can see quite a lot of enemies here they cannot really enter because they are scared and this is something that a lot of people don't really acknowledge. When you just stay here as, as a present person this already applies pressure to the enemies. They already have to consider you. They can bypass me as as much as they want I, I don't do anything I literally do 1000 damage on a critical hit like that's literally zero damage but just because I'm standing here they have to respect me because they don't know if I have vines they don't know if we have someone here on the on the back of the door with a grab well or maybe an ice shower on this side they don't know that so they have to respect that if you are not here and it's free for them it's an easy entry because they don't see anyone oh it's free let me let me just go in you know so that's why guys positioning is super important and it's really key for winning your games now we can see again the fight getting into the middle the light players are trying to get higher so they can have a better time shooting or healing targets i'm getting low trying to find the sacred standing in the middle trying to you know bait the attention towards me and not towards my light guys as you can see this fire mage takes a perfect position here because he is on the stairs he cannot be hit from someone up 
but for the guys that are down for example path of destiny will not hit this guy if you jump with a sword maybe you end up here on the end uh, at the edge of the stairs and for him it's really easy to kite up and down a lot of light users actually let me remove it so a lot of light users what they do is they go up they fall down then they go up again then they fall down and like this they can kite a lot of the assassins and uh, this basically gives them time as you can see this guy is trying to pressure I use all my burst on him this guy is also pushed away and this way is just how you secure fights just by presenting yourself into the fight and of course just being there on the correct position in time if we here extended the fight towards their base and we get wiped up most likely we will end up in a scenario when we will be the ones outside of the base trying to enter from the door and them keeping us there while we cannot enter and losing people and uh, getting enemies fed up with kills and so on and so on as you can see as well from the scoreboard uh, which will pop up in a second um, you can see that a lot of uh, action was done and a lot of clumpy fights because my my score here is not that high but I'm first just because I managed to soak up a lot of damage and I managed to did a lot of damage with 13 kills 4 deaths and a lot of assists on the enemy side they also have a healer on the on the first place they have another healer unfortunately I don't know those guys I believe this guy was playing void gauntlet ice gauntlet in heavy which is something that is really interesting now with the deep freeze build and on our side uh, as I said I was first I had my healer second I had my teammate which was uh, heavy bruiser as third so this is a perfect example guys that OPRs can be really interesting and equal by skill level if you have the correct team composition and the people realize when they have to fight how they have to fight and which fights they should take which fights they should leave and uh, and so on uh, this video will be short I won't go into further details because it's really hard to uh, explain and go into every different scenario in an OPR game just because there are so many different variations as I mentioned I played over 2000 games and I feel like every single time there could be something new that you can see but this is one of the examples that you can have and of course if you have any other questions or maybe you want to discuss something about it we can always go and discuss this in my discord channel which will be linked in the description below Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. Please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss future videos. But also you can catch me live on Kick where I stream from Wednesday to Sunday starting at 6pm. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one.